Hey everyone, I'm back again and excited to share today's message with you guys. And it is going to be one back on to the topic of relationships. Um, but really the concepts that I want to share with you guys today can most definitely be used in, uh, in all areas of your life, which you're going to be able to see. Um, but as you guys know, I love uh, using relationships as a really great forefront and um, just using it to depict the concepts because I think we can all relate to relationships. And if you can master the realm of relationship and in particular intimate relationship, you can absolutely master your life because it is one of the most difficult areas of life. So that's why I absolutely love sharing it with you guys. So today's message is all about uh, how to stop wasting time in the wrong relationships and to simultaneously ensure that the right ones reach their potential. Okay, this is going to be a really big one. Um, and uh, it's really come at play for me because as you guys know, um, through the messages I've been sharing with you over the last few months, pretty much for 2020, it's been very much around my personal growth and transformation in this realm. And you know, going through breakups, um, having different people enter my life, um, having some massive challenges more so than I've ever had in my life um, before. And so I really, I'm really honing this area and that's why um, I really want to share these insights with you guys. So at the end of the day, you know, I just want to be upfront and tra totally transparent and honest with you guys. Um, I have most certainly spent a lot of my life in relationships that I don't necessarily like to call wrong, but because they were absolutely right for me and my growth and that part of my evolution at the time. Um, but what they were, were relationships that uh, weren't supposed to probably last as long as they did. And that's what I want to dive into with you guys. So that's why I want to talk about this concept of wasting time, um, because uh, I'm speaking from my own experience in terms of you can spend a lot of time in the wrong relationship and um, as long as you grow and you learn from it, it's okay, you get my tick of approval, but you know, a lot of us aren't really learning and growing. We're staying stuck in the same old relationship dynamic um, or we're maybe going to a new relationship but consistently repeating the same old tired patterns. So that's what I wanna be diving into with you guys today. And you know, Definitely, um, you know, being able to vet the right person, the right relationship for you is absolutely paramount in terms of uh, getting you to reach your highest potential in all areas of your life. Because I think we can all agree that, you know, think about it this way. So if you think about if you're in a relationship, think about your relationship. If you're not currently, think about a past relationship. But when everything's going amazingly well in that relationship, you know, everything in life seems a hell of a lot easier. You know, somebody cuts you off in traffic, it doesn't really mean that much, whatever, you're happy, you know. Um, you know, but on the flip side, you know, when our relationships aren't going the way that we would like them to, maybe there's a lot of conflict, misunderstanding, disagreements, whatever, um, what, what the rest of our life seems so much more difficult and we can be so reactive to seemingly minuscule things uh, based on that dynamic that we're creating. So it's really, really important. It's foundational, I believe, uh, to living your meaningful existence, your selection of the right partner, and then not only the selection of the right partner, but simple strategies that are actually going to allow you to have that relationship that's got such potential actually reach it rather than what we see time and time again, which is um, the potential of a great relationship going down the gurgler because people didn't know how to understand one another, navigate conflict and all the rest of it. So I want to talk about this concept um, around firstly needing to absolutely figure out, you know, what you want and what you don't want in a relationship, ideally before you meet 
the other person, all right? And then we know what happens when you meet somebody new, you get into infatuation, they can do no wrong, you see all their good qualities, you see none of the red flags, and this is a common tendency of us human beings, right? I think we all know that part of how we can show up. So knowing human nature and knowing that when somebody new and exciting comes into our lives, we absolutely get overwhelmed with infatuation where, like I said, we see only good, really no red flags. We need to know that about ourselves and we need to have the map of what we actually want so that we can run it by what's in front of us, you know? So this, these, I'm talking from my past mistakes here, all right? So my past mistakes have been not at all knowing what I've wanted or not wanted in a relationship, and then not at all being consciously aware about the stage of infatuation and, you know, just the falling in love with being in love kind of feelings. And because I didn't have those two pieces um, mapped out, what happened was I had to learn the lessons that I had to learn, right? Like, and you know, that's why I say there's no regrets here, but um, now I've had an, enough of these experiences to glean a little wisdom, I hope, um, so that I can be more conscious about how I show up. And I want to use um, a little bit of a success story on top of, you know, challenges from the way that I've operated in the past, not being clear on what it was that I wanted at all or what it was that I didn't want. And also falling into infatuation time and time again until you realize, hang on a minute, this relationship isn't quite what I think we want here. Um, but what happened was, um, you know, it's, it's those two things were the big cause of a lot of relationships, um, you know, maybe that shouldn't have occurred, um, but did. And, you know, you've got to learn the lessons. Um, but one of the um, successes that I've had um, just recently is that I became consciously aware of this and somebody else entered my life and I did something very different to what I've done in the past. What I've done in the past is been completely open to falling into infatuation, completely um, oblivious to any red flags and falling in love with love and, uh, and you know, just getting really excited about um, any sort of potential. I didn't do that, all right? And what I did instead was I took a step back and I actually did the opposite to what I would normally do and it really paid off for me, all right? So the opposite was to actually be super clear on what it was that I wanted, what it was that I didn't want um, and, un and take a step back so that infatuation wasn't going to play the forefront and actually start to challenge this person um, and be really, really clear and upfront about who I am, about what I want, about what I won't settle for, about um, what's not working for me and being very, very clear when, you know, different red flags were arising um, to kind of just talk about that and just to challenge this person on that. And it was seriously building a huge new muscle for me. And what happened was the best thing ever, which was at the end of the day, this person um, presented themselves as the ideal that they perceived I wanted. And because I challenged them and I took a step back and I just, I kept it in the friend zone and um, was really quite upfront in my mind. Um, what happened was that person actually begun to show their true colors and they're a completely different person to who they first presented them um, themselves as. And, and now I've had a really great example or experience, which doesn't feel that good, but I've had a really good experience that's woken me up to, um, a lack of authenticity, a lack of um, congruence in different people. And to be able to build that muscle to see that a hell of a lot more is one of the most empowering things that could have ever happened to me personally. And so that's first and upfront, you know, we need to know exactly what we want, what we don't want. That comes from knowing who we are and comes from experience as well. Um, and we want to do that before we meet somebody we also want to make sure that we're aware that how easy it is to fall into infatuation and, and take, put the brakes on and really slow down. 
We want to absolutely uphold that standard of what we want and what we don't want um, during uh, the inevitable infatuation first stage, right? We just want to make sure that we've got that and we're upholding a, a standard that's important and meaningful to us. And then what we need to do, right? So like the wrong relationships, they're just going to go, they're going to be so repelled by that whole situation, right? The people that you don't want in your life are going to be repelled by that. And that's great. You don't want to waste any time with those people. The people who can you can create an, an extraordinary quality of relationship with, they're going to share those similar values. They're going to respect those. They're going to appreciate, um, you know, that you can be like that. And they're going to, um, you know, step up to the plate in terms of, um, the standard of relationship that you've outlined and that you want. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to attract somebody who's got that same level um, of clarity, usually around their relationship and around what they want, right? We end up attracting our reciprocal um, and that's time and time again. And so if they get past those stages, um, then, you know, what it's about is actually um, I'm going to say this in a kind of technical term and then I'm going to break it down for you. But if you want that relationship that has a lot of potential to actually re reach its potential, this is where you need to listen. And you might currently be in a relationship and maybe you, you've got a lot of love for one another, but there's some challenges and there's some misunderstandings. And this is what I want you to hear as well. You need to nail the micro discretions before they become irreversible macro problems. All right, that sounds really technical. I'm gonna break it down for you right now. What's a micro discretion? A micro discretion is something that just kind of ticks you off a little bit, right? It's just like, oh, I'm not sure about that. Um, that really kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but no, oh, no, it's too small, right? We won't deal with that, right? We'll just, don't, well, don't worry about that. We don't wanna cause any conflict, right? That's a micro discretion. And if you have many of them, which we do, and you allow them to continuously stack up, what they become is macro problems, right? Big problems that if you've left all of those little micro discretions stack and stack and stack because you, you just discounted them and you thought they weren't, they weren't big enough to, to really bring up and to enter any sort of conflict or challenge. Um, and what happens is it becomes that huge problem. And if you let it stack up that much, it becomes irreversible. And this is where you see what, a, what could have been extraordinary relationships. They could have reach this amazing potential together, fly out the window, and there's it ends up with two very hurt, wounded, um, empty individuals who are going in their separate directions now. And we could have saved that, right? They could have actually created something super extraordinary had they just addressed the micro discretions, those little tiny things, the little red flag that comes up, or the, the little thing that just challenges you or just goes against your values or something. If you address those little micro discretions, you give your relationship the potential um, of reaching its potential, right? And so, you know, you don't, this is the number one thing that kills relationships that are the right one that have a lot of, of um, potential in them, not dealing with the small things and you let them become huge things that then become so big and such a wedge between you that it becomes an irreversible problem. All right. And you can still apply this to the beginning of a relationship as well. When you do the sort of thing that I did, which was I really focused on the opposite thing to what I would normally focus on in relationship at the beginning. I would normally focus on all the positives, all the good, all the potential, all the amazing things about this person. And I'm wired to see that in everybody that I meet. That's how I'm wired. That's what gives me energy to be able to see what's great about somebody and bring it out to the surface. But I'd noticed over time that that pattern of my behavior and a skill that I have actually wasn't serving me when it came to who I have as an intimate partner in my relationship. And so I did the opposite. And this was the first time I'd done it ever. And instead of noticing all the amazing potential, which my mind instantly will go to, 
I took the time to build the opposite side and notice all the red flags. And I'm telling you what, there were so many of them. It would have been absolutely crazy for me to ever even consider, you know, um, having an intimate relationship with this person, right? And um, not saying that they're necessarily a bad person or anything like that, but when you get conscious about what you want in relationship and what you don't want. And, you know, in my experience, you know, experience enough challenge and, and pain and whatever in relationship and dynamics that are just and and not getting anywhere, but costing you a lot of effort and energy, you know, you start to notice and not want to actually waste your time. And by doing so, you're going to allow yourself the, the consciousness to take time and slow down and make the right decisions. Like I said, everything that I'm sharing with you guys today is absolutely going to help you stop wasting time on the wrong relationships because you're going to vet them out real quick. And also coupled with if you, you know, the, that person absolutely, you know, um, is coming with you on that journey and they are the right person for you, then what we're sharing today in terms of dealing with the little things and the little red flags um, and the little things that rub you the wrong way, um, if you deal with them quickly, you're going to allow your relationship to actually reach its highest potential um, rather than you know, create a huge problem and a wedge between you because you didn't deal with all the little things stacking up and now it becomes an irreversible problem. All right. So definitely, definitely hope that today's message has served you. I want to check in with you guys. So drop me a comment, um, any questions or comments or words of wisdom, um, anything that you have to share. I would absolutely love to connect with you now. So I'm going to dive in and see who's been able to join me or just say hi. I love connecting with you guys from across the globe. Um, but I've got Judy in the house and Vanessa and Marnie and Yola and Kayla and Sue's here and Jared and Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. I love it. Um, just say you're growing and the other person isn't on the same journey and there's a child involved. Hoping the other person grows with us, but sometimes feeling pulled back. Ah, oh, I'm really feeling you on this one, Vanessa. Absolutely. And, you know, I personally don't have children, so um, I can only speak from uh, the people that I really trust and admire who have got that experience with children and, and navigating that challenge. But I'd actually start it here because I've coached a lot of couples and this this you would you wouldn't believe how many times uh, couples will come to me it's usually there's one partner who's more invested in the coaching and the other person's just coming along for the ride usually it's the woman who's more invested in the coaching not not always but mostly and um, there is this discrepancy between hey I'm into my personal development and you know my partner just isn't and one of the greatest things I've seen is when, uh, you know, because there's different ways and different modalities of actually being into your growth as a human being. And I know all of us, we're into our personal development. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching a message like this, right? And, um, and we can get like really stuck. And I've been here myself where we're like, well, I'm growing and I'm doing all this stuff to, to grow myself, but they're not growing at all. And what I've missed has been that they grow in these completely different ways. You know, they don't, somebody doesn't have to grow in the same ways that we do. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there because I've seen this save relationships a, a few times now. Um, and it's really, really cool to just be able to understand and witness how is that individual, how does he or she grow? How are they growing themselves instead of me feeling like I'm growing, but they're not, right? And th just by doing that, you can get a new appreciation for your differences, um, you know, because that's what attracts you to one another. You know, you're not the same person. You have different ways of living, growing, thinking, feeling, perceiving the world, all these different things. And sometimes it just comes down to understanding and then appreciating those differences, 
But then secondly to that, you know, um, the way that you are growing, you know, uh, it can be changing your whole life, you know, and so your whole perception on the world, you might be um, shifting in your values and there, there might be some really big changes at play uh, that are not necessarily in alignment with that partner. So what I would say to you here is, again, you don't even need to have the same values. And I know this can be a challenging one because most people teach, well, absolutely, yes, you do have to have the same values. That's key to having a great relationship. But I like to take Dr. John D. Martini's perspective on this. And it's not necessarily that that partner or that person has to have the identical values as you. What it actually is, is being intelligent and caring enough to find how your set of values supports your partners and vice versa. All right. So, um, and in actual fact, when you have different values or different areas that you've grown, you can actually come together and enhance and expand each other's lives a hell of a lot more had you been having the exact same values and growing yourself the exact same ways. And I can definitely speak from personal experience with this. You know, I was in a five year relationship with a partner of mine and we worked together and we did everything together. I'm talking, we went to all the same courses together, all the same events. We never left each other's side. We learned from the exact same coaches. We even coached together, all right? So we did everything in alignment. And I'm telling you right now that that was not an easy relationship dynamic to have at play. And in fact, it had a lot of blind spots because we were so similar in so many ways. And um, also a lot of codependence, you know, so it's really important to understand that it's not about, co we don't want codependence when you're totally the same and totally reliant on one another and you're growing, you have to grow the same ways and stay together. And we don't want independence where you're just completely separated in your lives and living these, you know, these parallel universes. And what we really want is interdependence. We want to have that, we want to have that overlay. We want to um, also have our differences and our independent um, streams of growth and, and what we're interested in in this world. But we need to have great quality communication and a vision for what we're both inspired by that incorporates everything that's meaningful to two very different individuals. All right. So went off in a bit of a rant with that one, Vanessa, but I really, really hope that that served you. And um, please always know that you can reach out. I know you're in the masterclasses. Come and join us and I'm happy to support you further on that as well and hear a bit more about what's going on. Um, but I love that, Vanessa. Thanks so much for sharing. And Josie's here as well. And Bina, thank you, my friend. And uh, Dill, you believe in it. I I do. I definitely am sharing a lot of my beliefs here. And Bina, um, thank you for lovely direction. You're so welcome, my friend. I'm grateful uh, that this was of value. And uh, Ty's here as well. Um, forgiveness and understanding are the keys for whatever happens. The big one becomes small. Um, the big one becomes small and then the small will be go gone. Ah, I love it. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely. You know, and I would say that that forgiveness and that understanding starts in, with you first and foremost, you know, forgive yourself for the mistakes that you think you might've made or the, the ways that you might've behaved or operated that you're less than proud of and give yourself understanding about what's been going on and maybe why that occurred and, you know, what you want moving forward. And because at the end of the day, all conflict is a battle over understanding. We just want to be understood. And oftentimes we're not even hearing one another because we're so insistent on getting that person to understand our perspective. We don't hear a single word that they say. And so I love that you've brought this to the conversation um, there, Ty. I think I say your name right. Um, because if you can give yourself understanding and forgiveness, I love that as well, then you're going to be able to actually hear your partner and you're going to be able to actually express yourself in a way that they can actually comprehend. All right. So I love that and uh, appreciate that. And absolutely, you can diminish 
the challenges in your relationship absolutely through understanding and forgiveness and communication, as we know, is absolutely vital and key. But remember, like you really need to look after your own self uh, as the core and the foundation to your relationship success. So reach out to me um, with any questions that you might have with that. I love that. And Vanessa, yes. Um, do you think we can sometimes fall in love with potential and not the reality? Hell yeah. Let's tell me about it. That's my whole life story. You know, I would go as far to say that every single relationship that I have had to this point in my life has been falling in love with the potential that I see, the greatness that I see in somebody, what they could be, where they could go, um, and not actually in the reality of where that person is at. And that's not healthy for me. It's not healthy for them. You know, it's not a good way to be. And, you know, as a lot of, a lot of us are idealists, you know, I tend to attract a lot of you guys because I'm one, you know, and uh, it's really interesting to see that what we really need to do is get ourselves into realism. That's what my number one focus in my life right now is stop being so idealistic, start entering a space of realism, looking at the reality of what we've got, not what how things could be. Um, you know, and uh, like not seeing them as the best thing ever, also not seeing them as the worst thing ever, but actually seeing them exactly how they are. So good pick up there, Vanessa. Absolutely. And Celine's in the house. Awesome. And Lucy, yay. And Vanessa, ah, got it. Appreciating the differences. Thank you. Grateful that that resonated with you. Beautiful. And uh, Jerry's here as well. And Madeline, awesome. And Celine, yay. So good to see you. Um, hello, beautiful girl. Just caught you at the end of this live. Looking forward to seeing the replay. You look radiant this morning. Oh, thank you. Looking forward to our call this week. Yes, I can't wait. It's been ages. And uh, couldn't recommend oh, Vanessa highly enough to support you in any aspect of your life. She can change your life like she has mine for the better. Oh, oh. Too much love um, coming right back at you there, Celine. Thank you so much. That's such a gift. Um, yeah, touched my heart massively. Um, immensely grateful for you and uh, your beautiful soul. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you Thursday evening, your time. Love it. And uh, Gretel's here as well. And Mary Ann is here. And Gamal, uh, you get uh, you get the courage from you. Oh, I appreciate that, Gamal. And uh, courage is a good thing, right? Um, you know, we're always going to have our fears and our challenges, um, you know, but as long as we can step through and step into what we actually want with courage, you know, that's that's how to live. You know, we're never going to be able to be without that fear. Um, but courage is the way. I love it. And Jared, good to see you, my friend. Hello, my friend. Yes, hearing is a, is, is a key word. There's a difference uh, between hearing and listening. Hearing is an art that that's why you are just a remarkable, beautiful, caring, loving human. Excellent stuff. You're helping so, so many people. Thank you. Oh, Jared, you're touching my heart as well. What did I do to deserve all of you beautiful human beings? Um, that is so kind of you and I really, really appreciate it. And um, I love, yeah, what you're what you're talking into there about the difference between hearing and listening. Absolutely. So love you guys. Um, you're absolute superstars. And Celine, immensely grateful for you too. You're an angel on this earth. Oh, I love you guys. Oh my gosh. You're um, making me blush a little bit. Um, Lucy, um, forgiveness, yes, um, not important, uh, um, is important. As as you said, um, oftentimes we want to be understood to the point that we don't hear them, uh, nor they don't hear our words and needs, absolutely. And that's why, so there is this um, strategy that so, I've shared so many times over the past three years with you guys, um, but I just keep coming back to it. And I know Celine's done this so many times, um, but the release letter technique. Okay, so you guys drop me a comment. Let me know if you want access to it. I will find the Facebook Live video that I did for it. It's even got a template. And what it is, it's a really simple process for you to actually gain that understanding within yourself. All right. So there's a science behind our emotional states and how we transition and move through those different emotions. And this is a simple journaling practice that 
I've used so many times in my life. I've used with every single client that I've ever had. And what it is, is it's an it's a, um, a journaling exercise that will allow you to, when you're in that emotional state, say you're having a challenge with a partner or whoever, and you're angry about something or you're sad about something or whatever the emotion is, it gives you a process step by step to just get it all out and by the end of it, you've gained understanding about yourself and about, you know, you've moved through all of the emotions and now you're in a position where you can come from a loving centered place to actually communicate and hear another person. And actually, you know, you're even in a position, even if they don't yet understand you, you've already given that understanding gift to yourself. So you can show up and you can give them the understanding so that you negate their defenses and you actually get them as a leader, you get them to transition into an open hearted space as well, where they are receptive to actually hearing and understanding you too. All right. And you can give them the letter or you can just be able to communicate about it in a more intelligent, open way. So, so much about that, that is just super empowering. And I love that Lucy, always great to see you beautiful. And uh, Wendy, um, my comment is up, but got so much today. Thank you. Oh, did I miss it, Wendy? It didn't pop up, I don't think. Let me just quickly scroll back. No, I didn't get it. If you want to drop it, drop it again. Uh, sometimes Facebook does some weird stuff and I don't see certain comments um, until after. I don't know what that's about. Maybe there's keywords that it blocks or something. I'm not sure. So drop me a comment and I'll be happy to answer it for you, Wendy. And good to have you. And I'm grateful that you've gotten a lot from today's message. And Celine, the release letter is a wonderful gift to give yourself. Couldn't recommend this highly enough. Thanks, Vanessa. Awesome. I love that, Celine. And yeah, man, you've done a few of them just like I have. So I love that. And uh, Wendy, you're after that template. Awesome. After this session, I will um, give you guys the links. So that's awesome. All right. So I've got to, I'm, I'm lining up some more of these interviews for you guys as well. So really excited about that. Um, being in, in contact with some pretty cool, amazing people. They might take a little bit longer to um, actually be able to line up a specific time for them because they're kind of all over the globe and they're pretty busy people as well. So just bear in mind those interviews are coming your way. I've had just such a ball creating some of those for you and I've gotten some great feedback from you guys and you're enjoying those interviews. So I'll definitely be keeping them um, on the go, but a little bit more spaced out for you guys. So um, yeah, hang in for those ones. They'll be amazing. And uh, Lucy, uh, my letter actually is for my emotions and pain and I tear, tear it up and put it in the garbage. I love that. You know, I, that's a really great process. You know, um, I, I know people who burn that sort of stuff as well. Put it in the garbage, chuck it out, tear it out burn it, whatever. And it's, um, it can be a really good experience uh, to move through those emotions and leave them behind. And I love that you do that, Lucy, because a lot of people do the wrong thing, oh, which is they go back to the letter of their emotions and they reread over it and relive the same emotions and the same experience and they recycle it. So I love that you do that, Lucy, and you get rid of it, you know, because once you process it, it's gone. Uh, studies have shown that even the most um, a, like biggest amount of anger that you could like rage that you could have if you allow yourself to fully feel through it and process it, it won't take more than eight minutes to actually fully be on the other side of if you don't stop it and restrict it. So that's why giving yourself time doing this journaling exercise with the release letter is super valuable. So I'll link you up with that as well. And thanks for that, for sharing that, Lucy. And Jay's in the house as well. I love it. And Wendy, I need to learn that my ex-partner, as he uses um, my mental health to make me question myself. Oh, there's a great movie on that. It's called Gaslighting um, or Gaslight. I don't know if it's Gaslighting or Gaslight. Um, I watched it recently um, when I had my auntie come up and stay with me when I was up in Noosa and um, she put it on. We just watched it straight from YouTube. I'll link you up to it. Um, but it, oh, it's, oh. Yeah, it's um so gaslighting is this term which is used when um, a partner or somebody in your life 
makes you feel a bit crazy, right? For um, feeling the way that you do or operating the way that you do. And it, if it's just the two of you, it can make you really start to question yourself and um, yeah, and your own mental health and all sorts of things. And it's really, really not a healthy thing. But when you can become aware of it, and oftentimes it's really helpful to have people outside of your relationship, not family and friends, but some sort of mutual third party um, who can be your kind of bounce off and say, hey, is this what's happening? Is this not what's happening? Can be super vital um, to ensure that you don't fall victim to that pattern. It's a manipulation that comes from people who are very low in self-esteem. Um, they oftentimes uh, need to be right all the time um, and not willing to accept uh, their own challenges or take responsibility for what's not working within themselves. So, you know, you, it's a scary place to be around people who, in order to feel better about themselves, need to tear other people down. Um, you absolutely want to see that as a massive red flag and get some support. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, we, we want want the people who operate from a place of fear and do those things to be looking after themselves as well. All right. So, you know, as I'm always mentioning from the amazing book, A Course in Miracles, everything that another person does is either an expression of love or a call for love. Okay. It's either coming from love or fear. All right. And when people operate in that way, they're, they're trapped in a lot of their fears, but it's not, you know, it's not your responsibility to do the work for somebody who's not going to do the work for themselves, but it could be an opportunity to confront the situation and, um, you know, and support them on their own growth journey as you go on yours as well. So there's a lot in there. Um, but uh, please do uh, reach out to me if you need any support on that, Wendy. Um, and let me see here. I wanted him to understand my emotions, but he plays on me. Thanks for understanding and reading my comment. Absolutely. So Wendy, Another great reason why the release letter technique will really support you because, you know, uh, not everybody is going to be able to hold emotional space for you, unfortunately. And particularly, unfortunately, you'd think it wouldn't happen this way, but in our intimate relationships, a lot of times, and particularly the differences with men and women, a man can oftentimes, uh, because he makes it his mission to make you happy, and if you're not happy, he can take that so personally. And this goes both ways. I'm not just putting it on men because women do this. I've done this myself as well, you know. But um, it puts this block in their ability to actually hear your emotions because they're making it mean something about them. So if you take the time and you take the responsibility on for your own emotional states and you have a process Process, like the simplicity of the release letter and you really work through that and you own your own emotions and you give yourself that understanding, then you can communicate with your partner in such a way that he knows it's not a personal attack. You can even tell him that it's your emotions. It's got nothing to do with him. Um, or it may, I don't know, but we can have a chat about this as well, um, Wendy, but I hope that that supports you. And uh, Lucy, forgiving self and ex-partner. That is a really powerful pathway to take. And I love that, Lucy. Um, awesome, awesome work. And Tanya's in the house as well. Good to see you. So that really is my message for each and every one of you guys today. I really hope it supports you. I've shared a bunch of different random things with you guys today. Um, but I really help, hope that it makes you more aware and conscious about how to make sure that you stop wasting time in the wrong relationships and you start, you know, ensuring that the right relationships are going to reach their potential with some of the things that I've shared with you guys today. And I'll be dropping a link for the um, for the release letter technique so you guys can access that now. It's a really, really powerful and simple strategy for moving through your own emotions, getting to understand yourself and be able to present that in a in a better way so that you can actually have a really good dialogue with people that you care about and actually get understanding both ways so that you can grow, you know, and not let all the little things stack up. Like I said, all those micro discretions stacking up into irreversible macro problems. We don't want those ones. All right. So 
I hope this has served you. Please do share it if it has been of value to you guys. And uh, I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow. So as always, I'm sending you guys all of my love, light, blessings, gratitude, energy, enthusiasm, everything extraordinary coming to you to wherever you are in the world today. I really do hope that it's beautiful, amazing and extraordinary that you're doing something super empowering. And today's message has definitely served you and um, like I said got some amazing interviews that will be coming your way but they might be a little bit more spread out but um, love this and Sue you are so welcome beautiful soul grateful that this could be of value and uh, I'm signing off I'm sending you guys all of my love and I'll see you tomorrow